And welcome to the SpireMag.com VCast. Jim Comproni, Paul Konerdyke, Spring Football, East Lansing, Michigan, outside the brand new Tom Izzo Football Building. We're in the south part of campus, right across from Case Hall. I think that's Chestnut Lane. I should know that. It was in the dorm down there at Holden for a long time. And out. I think that's Chestnut. Anyway, new angle for us here, the new building, uh, Michigan State. New coat of paint all over the program with uh, new coaching staff, Jonathan Smith, more than halfway through spring practice had their first scrimmage on Saturday media were not allowed to watch it but today we were able to speak with Joe Rossi Michigan State defense coordinator coach Lange the defensive line coach also Jalen Thompson was out here Chris Bogle uh, got to uh, talk a little bit more about what's being taken place and some of the vibe the continuing vibe I would think Paul is um, excitement and some optimism, and a lot of these players are happy for a new beginning. Is that the sense you're getting? Yeah, especially the front seven guys. They love the scheme. I mean, obviously it's different, um, but in, in terms of like the defensive linemen, every time we talk to those guys, it's uh, we get to make more plays, and it's more um, less. You do your assignment exactly, and someone else makes a play. Then you know you do your assignment so you can make a play. I guess is the way I would describe it. And there's just a lot of excitement. I, I just feel like there's maybe less dread when they talk to us because they're they're learning and they're happy to share what what they're learning um and uh and i think there's i think the way the staff is put together and the the people that they have on the staff i think um i think the guys that the, co the guys that are running the meeting rooms have a greater appreciation in some ways for for some of the qualities of these guys like you know i, I look at a guy like chris bogle who who uh, you know wants to be a leader, wants to be a veteran presence and stuff like that, and I think he's appreciated for that. Whereas maybe he wouldn't have been as much in the past. Um, uh, that's not to to rip on an old coaching staff, but when you have a new coaching staff come in, they appreciate stuff like leadership in a defensive line room. That's rare, honestly, and they appreciate guys that are veterans that want to be part of something new or want to want to build something. And that's the kind of I think there's a lot of excitement because there's a lot of collective desire to build the program back and, and do it in a way that's sustainable and longstanding. And Derek Harmon's a good Derek Harmon's a really good leader on that defensive line. Also, you know, Bogle was spe speaking today, and Derek Harmon was one of the guys that encouraged Bogle to come back. Bogle was in the in the uh, in the portal, but decided to come back. In the meantime, I mean, hey, give us a like here at the channel. Also, subscribe to the channel. Go to SpartanMag.com. One dollar for a month. Check out our spring practice coverage, ongoing, continuing as we head into the recruiting season as well. It's going to be a lot of new things going on with Michigan State football. Just going back to what Harmon said, it wasn't so much I want you to stay here. It was give these guys a chance to give to give you their pitch and see what they think, and then make your decision. And uh, you know, and I want to talk to Bogle about you know what that pitch was about. It was more like uh, you know just communications that these are the kind of guys that that we are. And it, it, it surprised me to the extent which a guy that's been through four, this is his fourth position coach, was able to give his trust as quickly as he was to, to a new coaching staff. That's sure. Rare. And the, the fifth year guys that, that have been around here, like Maverick Hansen, has had, I think, five position coaches, maybe, maybe four, I don't know. But that, that that's, that's going to be hard to develop as a player when you're constantly changing and so forth. So that's something in the long term that's going to improve as they get some stability there. You know, D'Antonio used to always talk about the stability in the coaching staff. They've not had that at the defensive line. I I really like this guy, Lange. I don't, I've not learned to pronounce his last name, and I apologize about that. I've got great respect for his, his name and him and his culture and everything. I know he's Coach Lange. That's what I've Lange. been introduced. No, it's a, that, there's an N in it. Okay. It's Lange. It's a G, but there's an N in the, uh, an N pronunciation. Right. He told me that at Pro Day. That's awesome because so, players have mispronounced that to me. Yeah, it's Lange. And um, interesting guy. Uh, watching him at practice today, up-tempo and rapid-fire correction – and motivation, you know, coaches are out there giving a lot of energy in practice over the course of two, two hours, two and a half hours, every single day, every single day, plus all the other things they do. He's, uh, he's bringing it, and these defensive linemen like playing for him. You can tell that right away. Jonathan Smith wanted to bring him uh, with him from Oregon State. Oregon State wanted to keep him. I'm impressed with him as defensive line coach. If Michigan State's fortunate enough to get him and get him entrenched for a number of years, I think he's going to make a difference on the defensive line here. Yeah, it says something a lot. It says a lot about someone if uh, if you've got an offensive head coach, offensive minded head coach, and they don't hire a defensive coordinator, but they bring in about the guys that they bring over with them before hiring a defensive coordinator. Some head coaches might let the defensive coordinator make that decision, but um, you know I, I've heard good things about him from other people that work out. It, in the pack in the pack 12 or what was the pack 12 and uh 
It, you know what I, I kind of like about him? He's a blue collar guy that's paid his dues. Uh, he hasn't, you know, he wasn't born on third base. He's a guy that, you know, he's had every possible job that you could have on the way up to coaching ranks. And he's appreciative of, uh, you know, where he is, uh, you know, the opportunities that he has here. But he's also, uh, he's a guy that wants to get down and work. And that's what you need as a, as a defense on a defensive line, you know. And we heard some things from Bogle today talking about Coach Wilt. And he feels like, uh, you know, that he's the best rush rush coach that he's had since he's been since he's been here. And Bogle said that? Yeah, and he was like talking about, you know, he feels that includes like Brand, what's his what's his name, Brandon? Brandon Jordan. Brandon Jordan. But I don't wow. know if you know, I don't know if he's talking about just a position coach or not. I don't know. B T Jordan in my opinion, yeah, he's he's a consultant and a lot of people go go use him. But there's a difference between teaching someone how to pass rush and teaching someone how to pass rush within the construct of, of a of a defensive scheme. And uh, and I think Will, um, you know, he's got he, Bogle respects him. Bogle's excited about playing playing for him, and uh, um, all these guys are excited to get out there. Now, Wilt, uh, Wilt's another guy that's high energy on the practice field. A lot of coaches are, but those guys, even 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 then, some. Um, I'm going to be intrigued to watch how things develop on that defensive line. They've got a few players to work with. They had their scrimmage on Friday or Saturday. Um, not a lot of uh, details from that was able to cull a little bit of information from that. Joe Rossi, the defensive coordinator, was here. An interesting thing about, like you said earlier, they hired a couple of, of defensive position coaches before Rossi was hired as D coordinator. So there's a lot of flexibility in terms of personalities to allow that to, to work. You're bringing in Coach Lange to be the defensive line coach. Hey, come to Michigan State. We're going to hire a coordinator in the meantime. It'll be a new scheme, but you'll be able to, to, to plug in. And these guys are professionals. You know, if you become a coach in the NFL, you have to learn a new scheme, learn a new scheme, learn a new scheme. So even though some of these guys are coming from Oregon State on defense, learning a new scheme is kind of a different way to do it. Rossi's coming in as a defensive coordinator, and he's been told these guys are your position coaches, which is not common either. And uh, the personalities seem to be meshing. Um, we don't always get to know people that well, but my first impressions over the several weeks that we've been here is that these guys, like the D'Antonio staff, um, uh, it's, it's it's low ego, high output. Yeah, and I think Rossi he gets a detail oriented. Uh, he communicates what you know. He says what he means, yes. and yes. Uh, there's no gray area there. And he doesn't strike me as the kind of guy that's like a throw you under the bus kind of guy. He's a guy that hey, we'll make corrections and we'll get the job done. But um, I think it would be easy. Just given his personality, attention to detail, um, he, you know, he he holds himself to a high sta as high a standard. Mm -hmm. He's not going to hold his coaches to a higher standard than than he holds himself to. And I, I think uh, his reputation is uh, you know is tremendous. And, but I think uh, it, it's easy to work for Joe Rossi. It's easy to want to work for Joe Rossi. And, and these guys are um, I think these guys are excited about maybe uh, them coming into a program where. Maybe some of the players or some of the pieces are better than they anticipated. They I think that's true. And Rossi, you know, we talked about this back when Michigan State played Minnesota two years ago. It was after Michigan State had the big year in the Peach Bowl, won a couple games, went out to Washington, got blown out, came back and was playing the Gophers. And I, I didn't know who Joe, I didn't know Joe Rossi by name, but I saw his defense, and I wrote down to the pre-snap read. I'm like, Michigan State's got their hands full against this Gopher team. And Minnesota went out there and shut Michigan State down. Had a very good defense, very good season. This past year, Minnesota had a lot of youth at linebacker. They lost a, a lot of uh, players. Um, and they were down a, down a, several notches in terms of leadership. So I went back and watched a lot of press, co press conferences of the Minnesota Gophers last year and the things Rossi said about s after some games that did not go Minnesota's way. They gave up a lot of yards against Illinois and, and Purdue and some things just to see what he said. And it was a lot of a lot of the a lot of the same stuff. Very clinical about things. Very uh, you know, you know, uh, with answers about what went wrong and, and players that were in place that need to, to learn and so forth. As you would get, uh, you know, when D'Antonio and Tressel and and Narduzzi were here. And I think we're going to get a lot of um, explanations on things rather than generalities about I've got to look at the film, which we heard for three or four years. So in terms of covering the team like we do. I think there's going to be more to, more to chew on there yeah, as it, they build because they're not going to be right, great right away on defense, but over the course of time, I think they're going to build something nice it, on it's defense. It's not just us getting more clarifications. Players that are in that defense are going to get more clarification. They're going to know what they did wrong exactly, what they need to do to fix it, and it's you know, and, and they're going to have I, they're going to have better lines of communication. Where instead of talking about how great they're communicating, and everybody knows what page they're on. I, I think they're actually going to know what page they're on. And I, I told you this a few minutes ago before we came out here. I, uh, you know. 
that 2007 Michigan State defense was pretty decent under the circumstances that Mark D'Antonio's first year. It, it was good, better than I expected it to be. But I, I feel like there's more players in the program now um, that that uh, Joe Rossi has to work with defensively than than there were when uh, when D'Antonio took over. Now they had some good defensive. They had some good defensive ends. They had some productive guys, Joe L. St. Deke, uh, Irvin Baldwin. Those guys put up a lot of numbers, um, you know. But I just, I just feel like overall, um, they're not going to be plugging in a walk on it at half the positions. Yeah, I'd have to go back and look at it. I do think that there's is more here on defense, maybe not as much on offense at wide receiver and so forth as what D'Antonio inherited. It's a mixed bag. Well, in I don't a lot know. Of ways. If you look at that first year, look at that first year that Michigan State had at wide receiver. Yeah, Devin Thomas was a second rounder, but Mark Dell was a true freshman and had like you know like 15 to 20 catches, and then there was nobody else, which which kind of bit them in the in the bowl game. Um, you know when, when yeah, Javon uh, Ringer and Brian Hoyer. Right. I mean, Aiden Childs looks looks good, and he's really impressed his teammates. We hear that over and over when you talk to players out here. They're excited about Childs. The players are. The teammates are. Yeah. Now, Even the defensive guys, you know, like you asked, I, I don't know, I think it was you that asked, you, you, what were your impressions of the first scrimmage when you were talking to uh, um, to one of the dudes, and the first, first thing you mentioned was Aiden Childs, and it's a defensive player. And, uh, As Bogle was talking about Childs, right. and they all have. Watch Childs out there today in practice. Um, it's interesting to see snapping under center and some old-school handoffs, some old-school toss. kind of feel like I'm watching – a little bit of perilous ball there because you got to be able to handle the ball and all the quarterbacks do. And uh, that's that's part of what they did at Oregon State. And um, you're, you're seeing some that physicality in the, the, the run game. Could be coming back into vogue with college football a little bit. Michigan certainly had a lot of those aspects this past year. Um, Michigan State might be a little low on wide receivers this year. So the run game is going to be harder to to establish when you don't have the, the pass game threat. I wouldn't be surprised if Michigan State goes into the portal and looks to get some help at the wide receiver position after spring practice. It should be the easiest position to fill, hypothetically. Yeah, it needs some size out there. Even you know Dylan Tatum said that as a defensive player, you know, as, as a guy that covers these guys every day. It's very frank and uh, uh, a colorful comment a couple of weeks ago, but he feels like they need a, a bigger receiver out there. Right. And that's a great comment, and they, they in fact do. Nick Marsh is out there, you know, true freshman. It's going to take some time. Um, there was some 11-on-11 11 11 work today in Thud. Nick Marsh had a couple balls thrown his way. I can't give a lot of, uh, you know, it, um, information about what happened there because we're kind of on a, you know, if, if, if you're allowed in there, there's certain things they don't want. Uh, you know, they don't, there's, there's, there's only certain things you can describe that, that, are, that, that are going on. But Marsh is learning for sure, and he's got a lot of talent. It's going to take some time, but they're excited about him. For sure, you know Jalen Berger's out here doing some good things at running back, and uh, you know of course uh, Nate Carter also at running back. There are some returning players, and they're excited. And Tory you know, Foster, wide receiver. On Tory Foster at six feet, and Glover at six six one. Glover had some good plays last year. You know, someone made the comment that it's like some of these players, they didn't. Some of them might have been interested in transferring because everybody's transferring or across the country. Everybody considers it, but a lot of players internally as they talk about it it's like they didn't have to transfer because there's a new building a new coaching staff stay here make progress toward the degree that you started here stay with what you know and the transfer kind of happened to you the transfer came to you the program transferred well, I think I, I, that's an interesting way, way to look at it i look at it more of in a different way i look at it guys that wanted to stay wanted a reason to stay and you know like talking to gino vandermark didn't want to go uh -huh. but didn't know what was going on and maybe felt like you know he had to you same thing with, with, with Derek Harmon and you know those guys love Michigan State a lot of those guys bleed green Simeon Barrows another guy uh, didn't want to go if they didn't have to and, and these coaches gave them a reason to stay I heard the defense won the scrimmage we're a week and a half from the spring showcase April 20th the spring game be a week and a half from now we'll get a chance to watch Childs get a chance to watch Tommy Schuster the backup quarterback with a lot of experience fifth year sixth year guy coming in from North Dakota set all the passing records at North Dakota six feet uh, smaller guy not the fastest guy but accurate and he's got a veteran poise about him I, you know he's not competing you know, Childs is the starter I think everybody kind of knows that but they wanted to have people behind him that were uh, has some ability not only the the high school guys that brought in his true freshman but to bring in somebody who started you know throwing 80 touchdowns who's coming back to his home state for a chance to be a support role and might get in the game. He's one tweak away from being the guy. 
it's hard to do a lot better than Schuster, I'd say, for a backup right now. Yeah, and then you've got the, the aspect of you're Aiden Childs, you're coming back to, to the sideline, and you're not dealing with a redshirt freshman or a sophomore who's never played games, never seen what you've seen. You're dealing with a veteran who's seen just about everything you could, and, and you know, you're getting a valid, accurate impression of what, you know, of what he's seeing. And it's, it's good to have older guys around there that know their roles. And uh, I got a feeling there's going to be a lot of guys on this team that accept roles and play them to the best of their ability. I, I, one of the things I think that doesn't get talked about enough about this, you know, about Jonathan Smith and the way he operates is, you know, for the last four years here, everything is about what, what this program can do to get you to the NFL and, and whatnot. And that's been the, the talk, NFL this, NFL that. And um, these guys are ultimately working to try to get to the NFL, but I think the emphasis on team goals and what you can do when you come together as a team, that's something that these players, I think they really have vibed on. And uh, when you play for each other, um, you know, like Thomas, I've said it for years, you, you, if you do it well enough, you have an opportunity to get those individual goals. But the, the focus on team, uh, the wanting to play with each other, the fact that the guys that stayed are guys that all want to be here, I, I think that speaks value. And I think that the coaching staff, when they went and looked at their roster, um, there's some guys that could have been here, possibly talent-wise, but aren't here. And, uh, you know, the guys that stayed here are the guys that fit the program, the guys that they want to help rebuild, not guys that they have to babysit. And and, and that's that's an important thing. I, I'm looking forward to seeing Jalen Thompson a little bit. You know, that's a guy, when he was at Cast Tech, his junior film, I thought was okay, pretty good, whatever, okay. Then his senior year, he showed a lot of improvement after he committed to Michigan State. I'm like, okay, that guy's coming around. You know, that guy's better than I thought. I thought he was just a guy. I'm like, no, man, he's a dude. Comes in as a true freshman, played more than I expected, and had an impact. It's hard to have an impact as a true freshman defensive lineman. He did. It looks pretty good. Now he's go he just went through his first winter conditioning ever. You know, he, wasn't, he didn't enroll here early last year for the spring. So it's the first time he's had like a December, January, February in a college winter conditioning program. He looked bigger to me. He's, he's gained maybe five or seven pounds, but gotten stronger. Um, I'm curious to see uh, what steps he continues to make, because he made steps from his junior year to his senior year to his freshman year in college that I didn't quite anticipate. And he, he's, he's rounding into what I'm expecting to be a plus player at Michigan State this coming season and the year after. Every player that I've talked to that are veteran players have described him in similar terms, different, different ways, but the similar vibe is he's an old soul. Um, you know, he, he, he carries himself like a veteran. He takes care of his body. He does his work. Um, in talking to him in the past, I've got the vibe that, that he sets goals. I mean, it's rare for, for kids a lot of times, you know, they say, what are your goals? And people write goals down, but he's the kind of guy that actually, I think, looks at things analytically and, and can uh, self-evaluate. This is what I need to do to get to the point where I want to get. It's not like so many of the freshmen that came in on the defensive line last year, a guy like By Job, if you asked him, when he came in, what, what's your goal? I want to be a starting defensive end for Michigan State. You know, everyone's going to say that, and, and there's no, there's nothing wrong with saying that. But he's the guy, you know, Jalen Thompson's the guy that went out there and, you know, he set a goal and he went and he achieved it and he did the things that he needed to do to get to that goal. And, and I think, um, you know, I, last guy that kind of reminded me of that is a Jaden Reed. He's the kind of guy that, you know, writes down goals and it's not just lip service, it's I'm going to put in the work to get to those goals. and. Um, there's value to that and there's a, there's power to that when you write down goals or you set goals and you actually go about putting in the work to get to them and, and uh, those kind of guys are rare. Um, the fact that he hasn't had to be in college football for five years to learn the lessons that Chris Bogle has. You mm -hmm. know, when those guys, upperclassmen like Bogle talk about Jalen Thompson, it's like they see him as, yeah, they're older than him and they want to mentor him, but they see him as a peer, mm -hmm. um, as someone on, on their level. And that gives him a chance. And Bogle's interesting, a guy that uh, made some plays in 2022 in, in three games, pretty good against the run, lower body injury out for the year, I think in that Minnesota game. Last year came back, and I asked him how he felt he did last year, and he said, he said I can't remember what he said, but he, he wants to do more this year, and he feels that he can in the new scheme, and he feels quicker than he's ever been. So that's a guy, it's getting into his third year at Michigan State, looked good in those first three games. Last year was kind of quiet. Now it's a new scheme. He's still around. I frankly didn't realize he had another year of eligibility remaining until the middle of winter when he went into the portal, and then he comes back to Michigan State. Um, a guy that they bring out here for interviews, they don't bring just anybody out for interviews. That's usually a sign that they feel like this guy is making some progress. He's a veteran guy, but Bogle is somebody when last season ended that when they were going, when Michigan State was going to go through 
all this transformation progress. I didn't necessarily have him inked in as a guy that would be part of it, but here he is part of it. So credit to Bogle. He's out here feeling pretty good. He's, he's excited and eager to get something done. I'm hearing good things about Ken Talley. I'm hearing good things about Ken Talley. Transfer from Penn State. Last year, had to play a little bit of defensive tackle because they were, the numbers were so thin at that position. Back out of defensive end now, and been hearing from different angles that he's been playing well. That was a four-star guy that went to Penn State, has had a quiet beginning to his college career. Now he's settling in, new system. Maybe the one gapping attacking might be more to his, his skill set. Another guy to, to keep an eye on on uh, uh, April 20th. It's interesting because Jonathan Smith was talking about Ken Talley as a guy that was kind of a you know, being a leader earlier on, like, you know, in this whole transition phase. So, and I think sometimes when a guy goes inside, I mean, let, let's face it, you learn some things. You yeah. learn how to use your hands. You, you, there's some things that you can't do or that you have to do when you're playing inside that, you know. Really and it was an emergency. He's out of position in an right. emergency. That tells you that they th thought he had some right. ability to, well, do, to do something that no one else in the roster, hey, we need you to do this. But when you get to play inside and stuff like that, and you have to learn some of the, the hand placement yeah. and whatnot, I think it does help you on the, on the outside. But at just a comfort level, I think uh, he's not the new guy in the program anymore. Um, he's a guy that's learning and, and growing along with, it, along with these other guys. And uh, going back to Bogle, I'm not sure what's going to happen with him th this year. Uh, you know, and obviously none of us are going to, I'm not going to go out and say, predict big things for him because, you know, we've seen him play some good plays. But my feeling from talking to him is that he did not, last year, I don't think he liked the way he was, the way he was used or the, the role that, that he didn't like the way his position was being played. I don't think he connected as much with that position coach as he had with uh, other guys in the, in the past. And I, I think right now he's excited. I, Every single defensive line guy we've talked to is excited about, you know, being able to make some plays, and and, and you can see a difference. I mean, he said he's heavier than he was last year. He looks like the, he's in the best shape that I've seen since he's mm -hmm. been there. And and I, I guess uh, when we talk to these guys, Coach McDonald, the strength coach, has got a, a really good reputation having come over from Oregon State with uh, with Coach Smith. He's not a guy that really likes to talk a lot to 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 reporters and whatnot, but uh, we hear a lot about. Every single time I've talked to a guy about what are you doing in the offseason, there's a big emphasis on speed training, flexibility. Um, and these guys are bigger, but they look like they're in better shape to me. And, uh, you know, and I, I think I think it's paying paying dividends on the field. I know that Cal Halliday, when he was out here uh, a couple weeks ago, was saying that he felt faster. You know, yeah. he felt excited about it. And these guys aren't, you know, these guys aren't carrying weight that will supposedly help them be more durable. They're uh, they're. They're faster, they're moving better, they're carrying good weight, not bad weight that's going to slow them down. The holiday you see this fall might not be the holiday you saw last year. Bogle was talking about it, playing quicker, playing more of a leadership role, has a better handle on what the scheme is. And it, it, when it's, if it's a one-gapping attacking scheme, there's fewer things to, to read and, and, and bounce, and you're not, you're not jumping gaps as much. I'll, I'll reserve judgment until we see it on the field. But the holiday you saw in the last couple of years might look different. I'm not here to say he's going to be all Big Ten or anything, but Rossi's been speaking highly of him. Jonathan Smith's been speaking highly of him. Bogle spoke highly of him. Um, Halliday is a, is a, could be a useful piece in there. Yeah, let's not forget that this is, a guy that this is a guy that if he has an average year, by his standards, he's going to finish it as one of the top five all-time tacklers at Michigan State. So, I mean, there's a lot of dump on Cal Halliday because he was playing slow. Well, he was told to put on weight, and he put on weight like a good soldier, and, and it, it didn't help him. Um, defensive line play was supposed to be better in front of him. It wasn't great. So, you know, it's easy to look at a guy and say, hey, he's not doing this, he's not doing that. Um, Cal Halliday's put up a lot of numbers throughout his career. He's stuck with it. He's played hurt at times. and. Uh, I do think the one gapping thing is going to help, but I mean, I, it, one of my pet peeves is people that act like Cal Halliday hasn't had a good career. And I'm, I, you're not one of those people, but he's like ranks number 11 all time tackler right now at Michigan State. Yeah, don't close the door on him being a, a, a good piece next year. Yeah, and, and I think, I, th I don't think you, I think you'll see more of a, a better rotation. I think you'll see guys with, guys with roles. Um, you know, Cal Halliday was just over, overly used. Um, Quite a bit throughout his career, and they had very, they were very thin at linebacker last year as they got in, into November. Now suddenly they've got depth there. You know, Rossi talked about it today. He likes all the individuals and all the personalities there. You have Halliday, you have Jordan Hall, you got Wayne Matthews coming in from Old Dominion, Jordan Turner coming in from Wisconsin. They're high on him as well. Um, all of a sudden you've got uh, some some pieces to work yeah, with there with with Halliday. And Aaron Alexander's the guy that played played a little bit last year. I'm not saying he's going to be great, but I'm just I thought that was the most interesting thing that Rossi said today. When he was talking, Darius Snow still around? Yeah, 
I don't know what he's going to be, but I'd, go but ahead. I thought sorry. the most interesting thing that that, uh, that Rossi said today was that he's gone into some springs um, in past jobs, not knowing what he had at linebacker, not knowing who was going to play play well. Uh, the 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 message that he gave conveyed today is that he has guys at linebacker that can play football, play football to his standards at linebacker, and he feels better about linebacker depth at Michigan State now than he's felt at at some of his former jobs, uh, you know, and during his travels as a football coach. All right, so they're not strong everywhere. We'll we'll continue to talk about it as we head into uh, April 20th in the spring game and see what happens there. Spring scrimmage, spring showcase it's called. I think 2 o'clock is going to be on Big Ten Network. Uh, I think it's just going to be a practice. I don't think there's going to be a a competitive game. I'm okay with that. Some people uh, would rather see a scoreboard on in some sort of form of a game. I want to see I want to see By Job out there, 20 pounds heavier. I'm hearing he's getting better and he's got a long way to go. Coach Lange was asked about it today. And he said, you know, about him, and, and he didn't mention DePate by name, Andrew DePate by name, but, uh, you know, a guy, he mentioned guys that have talent and they have to learn more about playing football and so forth. I have heard internally that there's there have been some positive impressions with By Job. First of all, credit to By Job for not going back at the portal. He was a four star recruit, came in, had a lot of interest around the country. It would have been real easy for him to just go back in after not playing as a tr- freshman, didn't even travel. He stuck with it, added to his body. He's got wheels. He's got a lot to learn in terms of football, but he's got wheels. So we'll see what's going on with him April 20th. Offensive tackle situations there going on. you got Brandon Baldwin. Ashton Lepo's coming around. They'll need something from Lepo. And, uh, you know, Luke Newman is not here yet. Going to transfer in from Holy Cross. I I thought that he might be a left guard type. Maybe they'll look at him at at tackle as well. A lot of things at tackle need to be ironed out. And like we said earlier, wide receiver, not a strength at this point. I'm not here to say the, the, the team is great. And they're not, it's not like they've got great depth at all 22 positions. Wide receivers got to come around, and some players have to develop, have to add some, some personalities there, some, some players there, some personnel there. But the quarterback is interesting, and the defense has some parts, and we'll continue to learn as we go forward. Anything else, Paul? So uh, we'll, we'll, we've got more interviews coming up on Thursday, more coverage at SpartanMag.com. Give us a like here at the channel. Go to SpartanMag.com. Subscribe for more coverage and analysis of spring football from Michigan State at, here at Michigan State. For Paul Konerdyke, my name is Jim Comproni, publisher of SpartanMag.com. You've been watching the VCast with the Spartans from East Lansing for SpartanMag.com.